is someone that I neglected to tell you yesterday. Um, the ultimate pinnacle of training for the U.S. Marines is called the Crucible. The ultimate pinnacle of training for the Navy SEALs is called Hell Week. I served in the Air Force. Our ultimate was called the Gravy Train. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, but Moshe Dayan chose Masada as the place for swearing in of the armored division of the IDF. And so what they would do is they would climb up the snake path in the dark and they would have their train, they would have their swearing in ceremony up here by torchlight. So you have achieve the ultimate. Raise your right hands. <laughs> Repeat after me. I have climbed the snake path. I have climbed the snake path. I have stood on the summit of Masada. I have stood on the summit of Masada. I am a one God Jesus name apostolic. I am a one God Jesus name apostolic. And I will never surrender. And I will never surrender. This is where the top level was, it's called the Northern Palace, and then there's the middle one and the bottom one, so we're going we're gonna to go all the way down there, but it, it's quite a climb. We're standing on the summit of Masada and we're actually in the area that was Herod's upper palace. He had three levels here. Down below us you can see uh, the circular area of the middle palace and then beyond that is the bottom palace. It was, it was three different levels. Over, over here you can see the outlines, the square outlines of one of um, Roman General Silva's camps. He had camps all the way around this, the bottom of this mountain, and the wall. He had a wall all the way around. Over here you can see a much larger camp and the remains of the wall that, uh, that prevented anyone from escaping or any supplies from coming in. So this was a, this could have been a summer retreat, but definitely it was a place for Herod to flee for safety in case there were a Jewish rebellion or in case the Romans turned against him or in case uh, somebody else decided to usurp the throne. He could have come here and there was enough uh, grain stored here and water captured from the rain and stored in cisterns to last for years. He could have held out for years here. And of course it was a highly defensible position. It took Roman engineering uh, to build a ramp to finally breach the walls, and we'll see that ramp in just a minute. It was highly polished floors, painted walls. It was, it was no doubt a beautiful and breathtaking thing uh, to be here.
We're standing in the lower terrace of Herod's palace at Masada. You can see the material that he used. These walls, the paint is original. If you look at the fluted column, unlike um, other Roman and Greek architecture that, that actually carves the fluted columns out of solid marble, this was not that way. They used local stone that they, that they rounded and then they made a mixture of, of some type of sand or, or, or powdered stone. In some places they used powdered marble. So it, it be, would be like uh, bonded leather. You buy a Bible and it says it's genuine leather, but it's bonded. That means it's not necessarily one piece of solid leather, it's, it's pieces of leather that have been glued together. So in some places they did marble the same way. They used bonded marble. They glued it together and made their shapes. This, however, was not even marble. It was, it was just like, it was like a cement and they shaped it and then they would paint it to make it look like marble. Sometimes they actually, they actually made faux marble paintings and, and would have it variegated like, like marble stone would be. So this is, this is the remains of Herod's uh, palace at Masada, the lower terrace. Take a look around and uh, look, at, look at what remains after 2,000 years. So from this lower terrace of Herod's palace, we get a view of the ramp that was built by the Romans. They were camped over on the other hill, as well as all the way around the base of this mountain, Masada. They found the easiest way to breach the walls was to build a ramp. And with Roman engineering and Jewish slave labor, they built that ramp that went from over there where they were camped. You can see the remains of one of their large camps there. And so they built a ramp by filling in the valley with stones and earth until they could push their battering rams up and batter through the walls of Masada. And the ramp is still standing, uh, largely intact after 2,000 years of rain and wind and uh, as, a, as a sign of what had happened here 2,000 years ago. People are huffing and puffing, climbing these stairs. And it's good to remember in a situation like this, what goes down must come up. These were storage rooms, and uh, once they're cleaned out, they look like this one over here. But to look like that, it had to be totally cleaned out. They were all like this due to earthquakes and erosion from the years and year, thousands of years. However, they did find grain. Talk about ancient grains. They found grain that was still fertile, and. Uh, and they, I believe they planted it and grew some of the grain from it. And it would be stored in this. So with all of this storage, and then the water cisterns that we'll see in a moment, there was enough food and water to keep people equipped for a long, long time. 